Myelin can be thought of as a protective covering found around axons. Axons are the part of neurons that signal to one another and to the rest of the body. Myelin is what makes human brains so capable of growing and development, and myelin is also attacked in multiple sclerosis. We need to find ways to restore that myelin in order to keep people functioning throughout their lifespan and with as little disability as possible. The Division of Neuroimmunology and Gliobiology is dedicated to developing transformative therapies to help people living with diseases of the central nervous system, most particularly MS, but all the related conditions. We are really dedicated to developing the next generation of therapeutics and caring for people right now who are living with those diseases. Since around 2010, we've taken a very active interest in how to develop therapies for brain repair. How can we best target the central nervous system and bring therapeutics to patients with the greatest efficiency possible? That the division really represents basic scientists, clinician, clinician scientists working together in a real way to do something transformative. In 2013, led by Jonah Chan and Mei Fang, we tried to evaluate whether there were any existing drugs already on market that might be able to help take advantage of the capacity for oligodendrocyte precursor cells to remyelinate the brain by turning into oligodendrocytes. And the lead drug out of those was a drug known as clomastine that was originally designed and marketed as an antihistamine. We set up the rebuild trial so that we could see if the drug was actually capable of remyelination. The most important thing for us then was to evaluate patients already living with MS, and we chose to use the visual system to both measure the effect as well as to ensure that there were a sufficient number of nerve fibers or axons available for remyelination. We could see evidence of brain repair, but also promising results in terms of enabling restoration and maintenance of the axons or nerve fibers critical for keeping function in patients with MS. The rebuild trial was the first step to let us know that brain repair was possible. A proof of concept molecule to identify endpoints, biomarkers, that may be useful when we identify additional remyelinating therapies. Beyond what we did in Rebuild, We've now also proceeded to do research to investigate other promising compounds and other promising pathways to see how else might we achieve remyelination and brain repair. The one thing I'm most excited about is body fluid biomarkers, things we can measure in different body fluids to understand the disease and to monitor treatments. What we are doing is we are trying to recruit as many patients as possible in our biomarker studies to identify novel biomarkers that I hope we can bring very soon in the clinical setting. We're trying to understand how it is that axons of the peripheral nervous system can regenerate and re restore themselves after injury, whereas axons of the central nervous system fail to do that. While some entities have been pursuing avenues to suppress stress signaling in neurons, we've discovered that there are opportunities to stimulate those uh, same programs for repair. Translational research is critical to our team. We need to bring therapies from the laboratory into the clinic. And the way we achieve that is by bringing together people who understand the basic biology, along with people who take care of patients on a regular basis, so we can identify the problems and work on solutions. An innovation program uh, was a program that Ari Green and, and I actually established a few years back. We bring faculty and clinician scientists and scientists alike together to push for brain repair. I joined the innovation program for remyelination and repair because I was really excited about ways that we could take those strategies into other disease processes and other patient populations that so far are undertreated. We have been working with the FDA for over a year to initiate this trial where we're planning to give a remyelination promoting agent to babies who have preterm white matter injury and follow those babies long term, hoping that then they have improved neurological outcomes and function for their entire life. As primarily a clinician, one of the main reasons I stayed at UCSF after my fellowship training 
was the ability to stay engaged with some of the amazing cutting edge research that's going on here and to be able to give my patients access to clinical trials as well. How do we move our monitoring closer to people's real world life experiences in their homes, in their communities? There are now numerous uh, sort of digital tools on the market that allow us to look at pe people's daily activity, whether it's ambulatory monitoring, whether it's their cognition, how fast they type, um, how well they speak. My work in the digital health space is to try to bring in these other tools, hoping to find some correlations between improvement in one pathway and in the tools so that we could then use those um, for myelin repair trials. There's been so many changes in the multiple sclerosis field over the last 20 to 30 years. We've made so many advancements in disease-modifying therapies. So if we can continue fostering young scientists to make further discoveries, I think we can make a world where multiple sclerosis doesn't have a significant impact on young people and adults. I've been able to learn from so many of the providers that we have here that are the leader in this field. We are able to, to give a holistic approach to patient care, which makes this career a very fruitful and, and uh, exciting. We see unbelievable promise in the development of the next generation of therapies. We are going to make dramatic strides in helping to address the unmet needs for people with MS. Increasingly, we've actually seen diseases like Alzheimer's disease may also benefit from the therapies we've been developing. I think there are so many different avenues that are being investigated right now. I think it's a matter of time, and in the next decade or so, I think this will be solved.